The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics suffers from something called the measurement problem. You see, when subatomic particles or quantum systems are operating on their own with no one looking, they evolve according to the Schrodinger equation. Every particle has a wave associated with it, and this wave evolves from one time to another according to the Schrodinger equation. It's perfectly deterministic, perfectly normal physics, it's no big deal. But then as soon as we measure something and look at it, the wave disappears, it collapses or reduces or projects, you know, whatever word you want, but the wave function disappears and we get a single particle as a result of our measurement. And so there's two separate behaviors of this wave evolution. There's the deterministic normal physics evolution according to the Schrodinger equation, and then there's this instantaneous collapse of the wave function that leads to a single particle resulting at a particular location on a screen or at an energy level in our experiment. That's weird. That's weird. Why should physics, why should this physical system care whether, whether we are observing it or not, care whether we are measuring or not, uh, care whether it's evolving one way and then another? Like this just seems weird and it's one of, the, one of the biggest flaws or shortcomings of the Copenhagen interpretation. So what if we took a different path? And this path is called the many worlds interpretation and traces its origin to the work of Hugh Everett, a physicist who developed the idea in the 1950s. He said, instead of taking two separate behaviors for the wave function. There's one behavior, it follows the Schrodinger equation when we're not looking, and then it collapses when we are looking. What if we took that away? What if we solved the measurement problem? by just getting rid of the measurement problem. What if the wave never goes away? What if it always evolves according to the Schrodinger equation? What if it just happens? What if we take away that collapse of the wave function when we get a result? What if it simply just vanishes? What if measurement isn't all that special? What if what we call a measurement is just yet another quantum interaction? And at the subatomic level, that makes perfect sense, right? If an electron hits a screen, I, in the Copenhagen interpretation, we call that a measurement. But really, it's one quantum particle, an electron, interacting with all the quantum particles in the screen. And then the screen is sending an electrical signal, which is another set of quantum particles, and representing it on some display or some graph, which is made of atoms, which are all quantum particles. And then those that display, photons come off of that display. Those are quantum particles. They hit my eye, they hit the electrons in my brain. Like it's all quantum particles. The entire chain of measurement is really just a series of quantum particles interacting with quantum other quantum particles. There's no measurement. There's nothing special. And this is one of the biggest attractions to the many worlds interpretation, which is it gets rid of this nasty problem of measurement that quantum systems behave differently when we are measuring them. And really it's just quantum particles obeying the Schrodinger equation, evolving in time, and then that's it. What do you get from that? What, how does this solve the measurement problem? Well, when you have quantum particles interacting, what you end up with is entanglement. When two quantum particles in, interact with each other, their wave functions overlap, and then you have a single unified wave function that describes those two particles simultaneously. So in the act of measurement, the electron hits the screen, the electron entangles with the atoms in the screen, and then the atoms in the screen entangle with the electrons flowing down the electrical wire, and then those entangle with the display, which entangle with the photons, which entangle with my eyeballs, which entangles with all the uh, various uh, chemicals and atoms in my my brain and it's all entangled. And then my brain is entangled with the rest of my body. My body is entangled with the floor. The floor is entangled with the earth. The earth is entangled with all the radiation coming and going from the earth. And it, and it, and it turns out that everything in the universe is entangled with everything else in the universe. This means that there isn't one wave function for this particle and one wave function for this particle, and one wave function for this particle. No, there's a single wave function that describes all particles. 
in the entire universe. When you follow this many worlds approach to its full conclusion to solve the measurement problem, what you end up with is a series of quantum particles interacting with other quantum particles. And when they interact, they share a joint wave function. So you end up with a single wave function that describes the entire universe. You have a universal wave function. Now, there's something funky about quantum measurements, which is you never know exactly what you're going to get. When you shoot an electron at a screen, it might go this way and it might go this way. And that's random. That's probabilistic. So how do you recover the, the different experiences that we have if it's all just deterministic, ran, uh, a deterministic movement of particles obeying the Schrodinger equation? How do you get these random results? Well, one way to view it is that if there's this single wave function for the entire universe, when this quantum particle evolves, some parts of its wave function end up over here and some parts of its wave function over here. And so our experience of this event is that one version of us sees the particle land over here and then another version of us sees the particle land over here. We get different parallel universes because we have a single wave function that describes the entire universe and it ends up getting chopped off every time there's a random event, every time there is an experiment or a splitting or some sort of quantum interaction that can lead to multiple possible results. There's a single wave function that encompasses all of the possible results. They just get subdivided into their own little uh, pocket or parallel universes or worlds. These are the worlds of the many worlds interpretation. And so if you want to get rid of the measurement problem in quantum mechanics this way, you have to accept two things. You have to accept that there is a universal wave function that entangles all particles throughout the universe. And you have to accept that there are different worlds with each world having its own result from every single quantum experiment. Now this sounds very attractive and many physicists and, and non-physicists are very interested in this idea. It does, just like the Copenhagen interpretation, have its own shortcomings, which I will discuss next time. Please like, share, and subscribe. Go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to keep this show going.